Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sabbath School discussion. And uh, we are very happy that you have joined us. And we would like to just um, tell you this is Pastor Cornell Stoyan. And we have our friend Ashil Kogabo, who has joined us. I'm Mary Lou Bauer. And um, we are looking forward to this lesson and hope that you are too. So um, as we begin, we would like to open with prayer. And Pastor, you would open for us, please. Yes, let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much, Lord, for this week. It has been such a blessing, Lord. We, we are saved. We are, Lord, well. And Lord, we have challenges in our journey. And we know, Lord, that every single day, Lord, you are taking us in your arms and your angels, Lord, all the time are close to us. Heavenly Father, for those people who are watching us and for those people, Lord, who are listening to this uh, um, presentation, Sabbath School, Lord, I'm asking you to bless them, to bless each one of us, Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, bless Mary Lou and also Ashil and uh, all the other people, Lord, that are in the church, all the leaders of Chesapeake and the Western Bridge and the, around the world. Um, we know that this, the time is come, that uh, your coming, Lord, is, is already. And Lord, prepare your people, prepare us. Be, Lord, with us in this hour as we are studying your word from the book of Deuteronomy. Bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor. Um, this week has been a, a very big blessing to me. I've been able to share a little bit with... Um, a neighbor and have met some new neighbors in my area just down the street. And um, for Halloween, I'm not big on giving out candy or anything, but um, I decided that I would give out a little uh, glow tracks with a couple of pieces of candy. Um, and so I sat on my porch and we had maybe I don't know, maybe 10, 12 kids came by with their parents and I was able to give them the candy and also a DVD that we have. And all the parents were very happy to get the DVD and they all said, thank you very much. And uh, one of them said, well, we'll stop by and we'll let you know how we like it. So I just want to share that with you. That was really a blessing. And mm -hmm. I appreciated being able to, to be able to do that. So um, as we're studying Deuteronomy, um, Deuteronomy, would you say, is primarily um, a renewal, the first three chapters, a renewal for sure, of the covenant originally established at Mount Sinai. And Moses has been instructing the people about some of the history. And so as we uh, begin here, I'd like us to read Deuteronomy 4, verses 5 through 8. Deuteronomy 4, verses 5 through 8. And we're going to kind of start there, and then we're going to backtrack, and we're going to do the rest of Deuteronomy. But verses 5 through 8, and I'll go ahead and read that. Um, it says, Surely... I have taught you statutes and judgments, just as the Lord my God commanded me that you should not act, sorry, that you should act according to them in the land which you go to possess. Therefore, be careful to observe them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples who will hear all these statutes. And they will say, surely this great nation is wise and understanding people. For what nation is there that has God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? And whatever, for whatever reason, we may call upon him. And what nation is there that has such statutes and righteous judgments as are in all this law, which I set before you this day? So I love this text because it's pretty wonderful to see our lesson is is entitled for what nation is there so great so great as israel 
So this is Moses' farewell address to the people. And he basically gives a little bit of history. And then according to what I've researched a little bit, I understand that he goes into basically three sermons. Is that right, Pastor? It's it's mm -hmm. three sermons that he's giving to people. Yes. And um, he wants them to listen and to learn and to obey God. So let's now read it in Deuteronomy 4, 1 through 4. And who would, of you two would like to read that for me? I can read, it. read it. Okay. okay. All right, Pastor, go right ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. Yes. Says this. And now, O Israel, the statutes and the rules that I am teaching you, and to do them, that you might live and go in and take in, in in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word that I commanded you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Your eyes have seen that the Lord did at Baal Peor. But the Lord your God destroyed from among you all the men who followed the Baal Peor, Baal of Peor. But you who held, who held fast to the Lord your God are all alive today. Okay, so two things. The first part that we read talked about Israel being a great nation and what nation is so great. What makes a nation great? What is it that makes a nation great? Any nation. The, and, um, I think the principles, the laws that they have, mm -hmm. and the way the way they apply those laws, and um, it is well known. It is well known in Israel, for instance, that there was no other nation like Israel, and we will go into the topic later on. But yes, this is was unique in, in its time. Okay. Also consider, did you have a comment, Ashil? Yeah, I was about actually to supplement okay. on what Pastor was saying. Israel sure. had actually a kind of a constitution law which was different from other nations that were in, in surrounding them. So that's what made them strong. Yes, that was my next God. question. Awesome, awesome. What made Israel strong? Keep going. What what made Israel strong? Yeah, first, first of all, is their God, the way the God has been with them, the wonders, the miracles He has performed in the eyes of Egypt, Egyptians. That all those have really been a witness to the people. That everyone was marveled about the God of Israel. Who is this God who is performing these uh, miracles? So that was number one. But again, the, the relationship between them and God, which is the law I was talking about. So those, those two, I would say, those are the, the two uh, points that made Israel different from other nations. Yes. But also, as Pastor was saying, it doesn't make any sense if you have the law, but you are not observing it. So observing it was another point too. Yes, absolutely. And, and when we think about what makes a nation great today, very often it comes down to their political power. Um, it, it, you know, their wealth, their military might, um, mm -hmm. uh, the laws that they have, their principles, those are the good things. But today, when people have a strength of will, maybe, and a strength of mind that they are going to take over something. But Israel was very different. And like you pointed out, Ashiel, they were not strong. They didn't have a military power, did they? They didn't no. have any military no. might at all. But, but, but mm -hmm. yes, Pastor, but, please. But there, there is another component here, which, which is obvious, it is the God of Israel. It, it yes. is the is God of Israel. And let me share with you something. We were speaking about the, the wealth, the principles, and, and you know the richness. There are 95 ancient societies that have disappeared. I read about uh, a while ago about another continent that existed. It was called the Mu, M-U continent. Yeah. 
yeah. that existed between Africa and Spain and disappeared completely. Um, Socrates speaks about it this fourth century before Christ. So they were so wealthy, they were so powerful um, that no other empire has been. Uh, look for instance, Japan or China, or there are so many other empires in the world that they were so wealthy. Um, the Passover Island, for instance, or many others, the Spartans, uh, if you call it. The, the, so there are so many nations that they were so strong, mm -hmm. they were so powerful, they were so wealthy, they had so, so many rules. For instance, many scholars uh, posit the fact that Israel has been uh, inspired themselves from the principles and, and and uh, laws of Babylonians, which is not true, uh, because the principles, for instance, Hammurabi, I don't know if you heard about Hammurabi, one yes. of the ancient Babylonian uh, king who established so many laws that are similar to the Ten Commandments, similar to many of, of the principles that, the, that uh, Israel had, but, but there is a but there, right there. None of yeah. the nation, none of the nation compares with Israel. Why? First, because their strength was, their strength was in God. God has never died. And uh, we, we, we see that for centuries, 400 or more than 400 centuries, they were very well. They recovered, they, even though they were in slavery, they, are, they were part as a nation and they did not disappear as all the other. But they, God has maintained, kept the, his name in Israel. And because of the Israelites today, Jesus was born in Israel. We Christians, we benefit the inheritance of God's word. So it's not about wealth and principles only. No. It's about the God, the, that God that makes the whole picture all different. It's not about, for instance, uh, America, make America great again. Uh, this, is, this is a slogan uh, in the political realm, uh, but there will be no other political power, no other kingdom greater than the Jesus Christ kingdom as Daniel chapter four and chapter, sorry, Daniel chapter two and Daniel okay. chapter seven speaks okay. about it. Yes. Uh, yeah. So God intended for Israel to be great in such a way that other nations would look and say, whoa, I want that. And they have a God unlike our gods. What kind of gods did nations uh, other than Israel serve? What, are, what were their kinds of gods? They, were, they had gods that were wood or stone or animals or plants. They had gods that were very, very different other than the God of heaven. And they worship all of these things and Israel didn't worship any of them. And they did everything completely different. And so they were to be seen as great and to be desired. Okay, so let's move on. Let's look at the part that pastor read. Now, this was uh, Deuteronomy 4 was telling that there was the Lord gave specific statutes and judgments, and they were to obey these statutes and judgments. Why was Moses warning them about this? Why was he talking about this now? What do you think? This is his farewell address. That's one clue, but what, what is it that Moses had to talk to these people and warn them about something very specific, which you read, Pastor, and that was um, verse two. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it. And, and, then, he's, and then he says, you're not to add, you're not to take from it, you're to obey it. I think the, the, the principle, the, the obedience has been existed from the beginning of the creation. When Adam and Eve have been advised to obey, uh, has been given a commandment to obey, not eating from the tree of life, uh, how do you call it, death. And uh, it, is, it is well known that all the laws that God has established 
uh, it was creating a boundary, a circle around them to protect them. Um, it is well known the fact uh, that Israel had no cancer uh, before, you know, before second or the third century before Christ. They were having no diabetes. They were having, uh, and the science confirms that there is no archaeological evidence for all the diseases that the Egyptians had. So it is, it is the law that God has given them was not only preserve their lives, but improving, giving a quality of life that has never been uh, yeah. um, in any other nation. So the laws that God has given, it was for protecting them. And of course, there are, for instance, curses. And we will speak some other day about the curses that God has established. And those curses can be um, uh, summarized in, in whenever you choose to go out of my laws, then things will come upon you. In other words, consequences of the law. This is why God says, don't take anything. Follow exactly the prescription. Now, nowadays, we, we see how blessed we are to follow those prescriptions. I'm speaking about the health principles, including the, the state law, the civil laws. The majority of the Christian uh, nations, they have the foundation of the Ten Commandments. They have the foundation of the Bible principle. This is how every society, Christian society started. I'm speaking about United States especially, started on the basis of the Bible. And th those principles we see clear that United States by, by how do you call it? Um, uh, it, is, it is one of the, the best country in the world. Why? Because they had the freedom of speech. The, how do you call it? The, the five pillars of, uh, how do you call it? Um, of the of uh, freedom of speech, freedom of uh, um, freedom from religion. Yeah, declaration uh, declaration of independence. Uh, yeah. I forget. I forgot about it. Uh, but there are five principles, five laws of United States that make them free: freedom of speech, freedom of of uh, of beliefs, freedom of. And there are five five uh, oh. <laughs> in my mind. The Bill of Laws. Okay, Bill of Rights, the Bill of Rights. The Bill of the Rights, Bill of, there you go. That's what, Bill, okay, got so, you. No other country has that, okay. Right. And, and, That's and right. it's obvious right now, many democracy, many countries are coming to follow that one. But yeah. United States, but excellence is, is, the, is the country that highlights the principles of the, the Bible. Amen, yep. So uh, maybe I, I cannot, I, I don't want to add anything <laughs> on the law, which is, uh, the, the, the limitation that has been given to us. I'm not adding or taking anything, but I just want to supplement on what the pastor was saying. Do not add or take. That's actually the title of the lesson. Yes. This, this was said by Moses many years. That's like 1,500 years before it, even Jesus came on this earth. But this, this is part of the prophecy too, because I would say, this was God who was speaking through Moses because the change of the law has been taking place in the history of this world. Let's start from the, the, the Israelites themselves, the, the time of the Jews, they, they are religious. As we have seen from previous lessons, they had like 613 laws. Yes. Added to the Ten Commandments, trying to make them perfect but we have seen how they failed completely. Yeah. We, we have seen also how the Ten Commandments have been changed. Don't worship idols. Some people have worshiped idols. Observe the Sabbath. Oh, some people are not observing the Sabbath. So all these are the changes that have taken place in the laws of God mm -hmm. while it was forbidden. So as we have seen, this is something that God knew it will happen. So he was preventing us from really falling in the same trap of changing the law. Amen. Either take anything or add anything. So we need to Amen. be careful. Um, 
from our lesson um, on Sunday, where it's, uh, our, our lesson title is, as you said, a shield, do not add or take away. And this whole thing, um, we know that the most obvious thing that Seventh-day Adventists would think about is the Sabbath commandment. Um, and we know that that has become a tremendously big um, issue is a huge change from the original Ten Commandments to something that is unlike at all what God said to do. Um, is there anything else um, that they have tried to change? Um, Jesus spoke about one in particular. Let's take a look at that. And that's in Matthew um, 15. Let's look at Matthew 15. And he spoke of something. Let's read that. Matthew 15, 1 through 9. Ashil, do you want to read that for us when you get yes. there? Yes, I, I have it. 1 through okay. 9, you said? Yes. Matthew okay. 15, 1 to 9. Yeah, the title says, That which defiles. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Jesus replied, and why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, honor your father and mother and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God, they are not to honor their father or mother with it. Thus, you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. That was verse nine. Yeah. So Jesus is saying very much the same thing. The law was said, do not add to, do not take away. And even in Jesus' day, he says, your traditions, you have made traditions. OK, and he he nails it right then and he condemns the scribes and Pharisees for creating a way around the fifth commandment. Does he tell us what the consequences are? Yes, he does. Let's just go a little bit further. And Ashiel, if you would read verse. Um, let's see. Uh, 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 let's see if I can find it. Um, oh, I'm trying to, I know I've got a, a verse that I want you to read. Let me see. I've, I've written it down. Uh, Matthew 15, verse 13. Matthew 15. Okay. That's mm -hmm. the answer right there. That's what Jesus says to them. What's going to happen? 15. Which, which verse do you want me to 13. read? 13. 13. Okay. Yeah. He replied, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. There you go. So every plant my father has not planted will be uprooted. And so he gives a consequence and he tells us what will happen. Moses was instructing the people and he basically said, remember something that happened in the past? What were the consequences? So the verse that we had originally read, and um, this is from, uh, again, Deuteronomy 4. He says, remember, in verse 3, remember, your eyes have seen what the Lord did at Baal Peor. For the Lord your God has destroyed from among you all the men who followed Baal of Peor. Well, this is very interesting comment. So Moses is reminding them of something that has happened in the past. What happened in the past? We need to go to Numbers. Let's turn to Numbers 25. 
and we'll read it and then we'll discuss this. Numbers 25 and let's read verses, I think it is one through nine. <clears throat> okay, I'll I read, read this it. one. I'll read this one, okay? okay. Yeah, I, I want us to talk about it, so I'm gonna read it quickly. So okay. now Israel remained in the Acacia Grove, which is Shittim, and the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. They invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel was joined to Baal of Peor, and the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, take all the leaders of the people and hang the offenders before the Lord out in the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to the judges of Israel, every one of you kill his men who were joined to Baal of Peor. And indeed, one of the children of Israel came and presented to his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Now, when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest saw it, he rose up from among the congregation, took a javelin in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her body. So the plague was stopped among the children of Israel, and those who died in the plague were 24,000. Now, in our lesson, we get to Monday, and Monday is a discussion about what happened in Baal Peor. And Moses says to the people now, basically, he's saying, remember what happened there. So he's giving them a warning. Obey the Lord. Don't add or take away from his commandments, his words, or what will happen to you is what happened at Baal of Peor when they worship Baal of Peor. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, what happened there with the men? And, and what can we learn from that story for us for today? So here's, here's a picture. Okay, go ahead, Pastor. Here's a picture of uh, Balaam and Bala. Yeah. Here's a picture where Balaam, a prophet of God, founding in Moabites in the foreign nation, in a foreign country, uh, and Israel was going, uh, was going to the desert and he was, they, were, they, they arrived to Moab. And um, then the Balak, the king Balak, has invited Balaam to curse Israel. Yes. So what happened was that he said, you know, the story of Balaam and a donkey who was, uh, he spoke other God prohibited him to go and curse. But finally, God concealed and, and said, okay, I will, um, you go there, but you speak only what I say. So you know, we know the story that he could not curse Israel because God has blessed it. But Balaam, according to rabbinic theology, and also we see in the book of Revelation, Balaam has inspired Balak, the king, to start a party and yeah. to let ladies to dance so that Israel could go in adultery and therefore the protection of God could not be existing upon them. Upon them. In other words, God was protecting Israel and Satan could not find any guilt, could not find anything that, that uh, Israel could, could have been, would, uh, would have been destroyed. In other words, all the snakes, all the diseases, every single harm was outside of the camp of Israel. But when sin started, when they invited the enemy in their house, then the enemy claimed yeah. to be the chief of that. And yeah. as consequences, Satan has destroyed 25,000 people. Yeah, it's interesting to me when I read this story and I think to myself, um, these Midianite women, these women from Moab, came into the camp of Israel and they were not immediately put out. 
They were not immediately alarm bells go off and they say, get these women out of here. Somehow that didn't happen. Why? My a mind started thinking about this. What was happening at that time is that the people of Israel were sneaking off into Moab and they were learning about these people and some of their gods and some of the things that were going on. And like you said, Pastor, when the king of Moab uh, held this big party and invited all these people, Israel wanted to go. Well, how did they want to go? They had to have had some contact first. They were enticed. So first by sexual immorality. And then as they came and they began to feast and all of these things were going on. My thoughts about this was, how do we take this lesson and make it a part of what we can take for our personal gain? today, the people that are listening, how do we talk to them about venturing out onto uh, uh, some place that we shouldn't go and what happens to our mind and what happens to us as we do this? I think that's what this lesson should yeah. be about. Um, there, there, were, there were many gods uh, in Egypt and many other parts. Mm. They were calling for pleasure. So in my practice as a pastor, going in the house and see, for instance, people who are possessed, demon possessed, I know very well that those individuals have been deceived their spouses. There is one of the actions that I know for sure. So when the possession starts or individuals, they are committing adultery. And this is, this is a fact, 100% of every individual that has been possessed in his family, they have illicit relationships with somebody else. The spouse, or they might or might not know, but I know for sure that they have this type of problem. So Satan knows how to attack the human vulnerability and men they were attracted. Nowadays, by pornography, for instance, you're mentioning how this can be today. Pornography is one of the, the, uh, the, the most Addictive. Uh, the drug, that most powerful drug in mm. our society, because right now, 43% of those who are watching pornography are ladies, not only men. So 43%, this is ama amazing, because the industry of pornography has been attacking not only the men, but also women. And you might wonder, you're, you're speaking about where should we not go? I don't think we should go anywhere because Satan is coming in our house. <laughs> yeah. I think right now we have we, we don't we don't go to cinema in Romania. When I was coming from a conservative country, uh, going to a movie, uh, a cinema, it was a sin. Now uh, <laughs> nowadays, I'm not I'm not going against that because nowadays we have home cinema. <laughs> in other words, we invited here. Right. But it is. Satan knocks at the door of our, our lives and our houses. Yeah. And we wonder why. In uh, Loma Linda, a few years ago, a group of young people, they, uh, during the night in the camp meeting, they, during the night, a voice came from the, uh, from the, uh, the forest. You are all mine. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, all the children, 11 children, they began to have epileptic um, reactions, all of them. And this is recently happening in Loma Linda in California. And all of them, they were having epilep epileptic reactions. Seizures. Seizures. Wow. Correct. And they call, they call their parents to take them fast home. Some of them in a few days, they were, well, uh, didn't happen anything, any, anything wrong, but some others, they turned to be LGBTQ. A homosexual behavior. So what happened is the, the church has started to study why is that happening? How this came to? And they came to the common ground where they were listening music, um, music from, you know, secular music. They were watching, uh, you know, Harry Potter, witchcraft, and all of these type of things. In other words, Satan tries to come in our house, homes, and we invite him by watching yeah. 
movies, by pornography. By That's story. one avenue. Oh. Do Correct. we do, are there any other avenues that we venture onto Satan's ground? Yes, we, we have uh, the television, we have the internet, um, the telephone even, the phone, mm -hmm. um, all of these things that we can now plug into, we bring it right into our house. Mm -hmm. What about other places and other ways that we might do that? I mean, I think about what uh, the king of Moab did. He had this big party uh, where they were going, they were actually honoring his gods. To me, that kind of set off a couple of alarm bells in that thinking, okay, maybe these Israelites went to the festivities thinking, we're just going to be observers. We just want to go. We just want to see what's going on. And my neighbor, he's very attracted to um, these Moabitess women or whatever. And I just kind of want to see what's going on. And like you said, Satan sets up a trap for us. And sometimes we enter in and we have no idea that we're standing in quicksand and then we can't get out. So I think these are some of the things we need to think about today. How am I possibly bringing this to me? Uh, how am I entering upon ground that I should not be entering upon? Mm -hmm. um, entertaining uh, is in my home is one thing, but going out, being with people that are not of like mind. It's a very dangerous thing for us to do, isn't it? So the one thing that is the answer is Tuesday's lesson, and that is to cleave to the Lord, cleave to the Lord. So the verse, um, verse four in Deuteronomy four is, but ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you this day. So the example of what happened at Peor and all those 25,000 men, I'm assuming it didn't mean just the male sex, but men, uh, meaning people. Um, but then he says, Moses says, those of you that are alive, every one of you this day, it's because you cleave to the Lord. You hung on to him. You, you, the closest possible relationship that you can have is what God wants for us between him and I, between you and your Lord and your savior. So what about um, the differences between those who fell and those who clung to the Lord. What sort of differences can you share with us that we might have as a Christian today? What would those differences look like in, in the Christian's life? Actually, the law of God has been given to us for our benefit. It's not like, it's not, I would say it's not, uh, how can I say it? It's not like a stone that is put on our head to carry it. It's, it's, it's for our benefit. Obeying yes, the yes. Lord, if you obey the Lord, like the, the, the living laws that Pastor was talking about, the, the, the health benefits that we get from eating health food, the, 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 the joy we get from uh, worshiping God, the joy we get from studying the Bible, the way we spend time with God, reading the Bible, just focusing on him, all these are for our benefits. So it's the same, there is no middle ground as we have seen from this uh, lesson. We need to choose either God or Satan, but the good, the, the thing, the good thing is whenever you choose God, you get more benefits than choosing the devil. Mm -hmm. and, and you see the reaction of every single commandment of God, every rebellion against uh, commandments of God. 
will become the, the society becomes an anarchy, um, including, for instance, the moral law. I'm speaking about the adultery. Um, nations like the Spartans, nations like many others that Greek empire, which they had, you know, the um, that they were they were had a lot of bastard children, as we call it, and they were having no family at all. And they were having so many, so many um, adulterous uh, way of, of doing um, that did not survive that society. And God says, you know, do not lust. Do not desire something that is not yours. Be satisfied. Be happy. Be content with what you have. And, and all of these laws that God has given us um, are, if we cleave to the Lord, we see our lives happy. I'm not speaking about prosperity. I'm not speaking about, you know, having millions of millions of dollars and, uh, you know, not having diseases. Um, of course, uh, the, you, you'll have, you have uh, problems and trials in every single life. But the quality of life, no matter what, what is going on in your life, no matter where and how the pandemic or whatever other disease may, may come, uh, you see the reaction and I have been witness to going to the individuals in the last moment of their lives. I had several, many people going to the hospital right before he was passing away or she was passing away. And I see the big difference between God's people and those people who have never, never accepted Jesus Christ in their lives. Uh, they are desperate. They do not know where to go. They don't want to die. They, they scream. They, they are, don't want to leave. They don't. And on the other hand, you see those people who are trusting Jesus Christ, putting their lives in Jesus Christ's hands, and they have peace. And they say, Lord, I have done, I have finished my, my work. Um, and I remember, for instance, uh, for instance, one of them, it was uh, Bill Potter uh, it, from Chesapeake. It was incredible, an incredible experience. The doctor told him that he was not going to make it the next day. And I, it happened to be right, right in that night that no family member was there. And I asked him, Bill, how do you feel about it? And he said, Pastor, I have peace in my heart. I have done everything to worship Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And right now, the Lord will put me to rest. I am ready. And I was so astonished to see this peace because the contrast is bigger. So what I'm saying is that the law of God, cleaving yeah. to the Lord, it is the unique, the only solution we have today. Yeah. No money or families, or some other individual that they are making, they are keeping our happiness, everything will disappear one day, but living to the Lord will stay forever. What we yeah. do. Do you allow what, me to read? Oh, go the, right ahead, Ashiel. Yes, I, please. I really, I really want the listeners to see, the, to, to, to understand these words. The last yeah. paragraph in the lesson on Tuesday yeah. it says, God <laughs> is faithful, God is able to keep us from falling but we have to make the conscious choice as did the faithful at Bo Peor to cleave to God. If so, then we can be assured that whatever the temptation, we can remain faithful. Mm -hmm. So this is really, these are good words too. It's good. That this is the only way. Actually. This is the only way. Choose God. Yes, thank you. I was going to read that very paragraph. So that's oh. great. We both have the same thinking. So the choice is really ours. I mean, we can live our lives um, just any way we want to, but why not choose the way that gives you confidence and peace and hope? And all of it makes everything so much easier. Not always better, like Pastor said, in the way of finances or those kinds of things, but the hope for a future is the most amazing and wonderful thing ever. Um, let's go ahead and look at uh, what nation is so great. We've already talked about that. So I want it to go right to Thursday your wisdom, your understanding. And we've read Deuteronomy all the way through, uh, Deuteronomy 4, all the way through 9. Um, and this was a powerful expression of not only nation of Israel's status, but its missionary calling. 
that's really the key. Part of what made Israel was great, Israel great, was that they had the true God who, who was with them, but God gave them a special message, a special job to do. And what other nation had been given this very same job? No other nation. As spiritual Israel today, because there is a nation of Israel, Israel, but spiritually speaking, who are spiritual Israel and what is their job, so to speak, their job for God? I, I will say that, first of all, speaking about Israel, their greatness was in their mission. Uh, their greatness was in carrying the torch of light to the whole world. Isaiah chapter 49, very, uh, very clear, says, I will make you to be the light of the world. Yes. I will make you to be the, and all the kings, they shall bow down before you. Uh, it, this, this promise that we, Isaiah had, God has given to, to Isaiah, it was God's intention, God's purpose that everybody will come under the leadership of Israel, under spiritual leadership of Israel. But they have understood it wrong. They have believed that they will be so powerful, so strong, and, and, and uh, in a way that, that all nations, they have to obey. Uh, but looking, looking to our days, uh, looking to um, our, the Seventh-day Adventist, there is no doubt uh, that Seventh-day Adventist is the only, let me say it again, is the only denomination that God has chosen to carry and to be partaker of his life. You see, God, why is that? Is because God doesn't work with two or three people, doesn't work with three or four or five people. They work, he works, he's chosen only one people and he gave them the laws. Seven day Adventists inherit. And I, as a pastor, I can say that before being a pastor, I had a lot of relationship and I still have relationship with the Baptist ministers, Pentecostal minister, um, including with the Jesuits. I had two Jesuits talking with, with them uh, in the past. They are astonished. They are amazed by how the Seventh-day Adventists live their experience, how the Seventh-day Adventists understand the scripture. Um, and and it's, it's a, in the beginning, it's a epithet, how do you call it? It's a title or, or, or a ban that is putting on our, on our hands, all oh, Seventh-day Adventists, the fanatics. But when they began to talk, when we began to share what God has given us, they are astonished, everybody. Everybody, I had so many meetings with Pentecostal and evangelical pastors that are astonished, only the prophecy or something, some small part, portion of, of the Bible. It is because God has given us light and all the others, they live in darkness. Doesn't mean that they are not God's children in the other denominations or religions. Yes. But the purpose of God is to bring all to Jesus Christ in his truth. It's not yeah. about the denomination. It's not about the church and institution. It's about the truth of God. It's about the spiritual Israel yes. of modern day, modern days, which is Seventh Day Adventist at this moment. And only the Holy Spirit can do the convicting, Pastor. They yeah. could hear you and still not really understand and hear you with their heart, but Correct. they heard you with their heart because the Holy Spirit convicted them. And mm -hmm. I think that's really beautiful. Um, Thursday's Absolutely. lesson also talks about your wisdom and your understanding. Was the wisdom and understanding of Israel because were they was it because they had the Ten Commandments? Is that what gave them wisdom? Is that what gave them understanding? What was it? What was it? Something very tangible. We've been talking about it almost the whole time. And, and what I'm looking for is the fact that they kept these laws. They obeyed mm -hmm. God. It's, That's it's, what made the wisdom and understanding of Israel. Go ahead, Pastor. I, I, I see right now the reaction or the action of Israelites today. I see that they have a special law. They still cling to that. They still claim those promises. They still have that education for centuries yeah. and they are very prosperous. The thoughts of a Jewish uh, child 
It is, I am the light of the nation. I am the light of the world. And there is nobody like me. So mm. therefore I have to prepare, I have to be the best. I am the president of the, of the, of the, of the class. Uh, there is no other like me. Because that principle that is coming from God says that you are the, the light of the world. And not only, uh, the principles they are keeping still, it's still making them a unique people. Not a great nation, because there are a few, but uh, a, a unique, I will say, a, a very peculiar people, very rich and, and very organized. But they are missing the the peak the understanding and the wisdom of god which at this moment i think they are still maintaining a little bit of light in the laws and principles mm. but god could have done incredible work through them to entire world but without jesus christ there is no light so what i'm trying to say is that god and the understanding and the wisdom that is coming, uh, God has given through the law. By obeying the law, you achieve yeah. understanding and wisdom. It's about obedience to the word of God. Yeah. But <clears throat> only the law uh, doesn't, doesn't make you to be the light of the world. Protects you, keeps you. But wisdom is not something that you can achieve through the law. It is something that is coming only from God. Amen. Amen. Ashil, uh, any yeah, comment something there? Something I want to add on as uh, trying to define what is this understanding and the wisdom, I just want to use this uh, verse from Job 28, chapter 28, verse 28, which says, yes. And he said to the human race, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to shun evil is understanding. Yeah. So the message here is, the law of God, to understand it, mm -hmm. to live according to it, that's the obedience, that's the wisdom, actually. And this is the message that needs to be taken out of this yeah. lesson. Anything, you can work hard, you can make money, you can be rich, but you will never be great if you don't obey the law of God. That's the only way you can really be satisfied in this life. And again, as maybe we conclude, I know we are turning toward the end, if I see the lesson, I just want to emphasize on this last paragraph again in Thursday, which says the obedience to the law of God will make them marvels of prosperity before the nations of the law. He, would, he who could give them wisdom and skill in all cunning work would continue to be their teacher and would ennoble and elevate them through obedience to his law. If obedient, they would be preserved from the disease that afflicted other nations and would be blessed with vigor of intellect. So they were to be a kingdom of priests because of obedience to God. So this Amen. is the message I just want to emphasize on. Obey God, be wise, and understand his rules. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Proverbs, I, I don't know which verse it is. It's not coming to me, but the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And that fear isn't to be afraid of God. It's the respect and the honor and the glory that we give to God is the beginning of wisdom. And when I think of that verse, I think that's the beginning. There's more to come. And I'm looking forward to the more that's supposed to come. I, I really, really uh, am. Um, so all of these uh, things that we have learned about today, um, how are we responding to these things that we have learned? That's really where we need to finish up our lesson, just to be a little introspective and to think about with what I'm learning in Deuteronomy, it's not just ancient news. It's not just past history for Israel. It applies to us today. And if we take these very lessons to heart ourselves, then we are responding in the right way. And we're going to um, have that peace and we're going to have that wisdom and that understanding that the Holy Spirit has promised. So um, that's what I took away from the lesson. So any other comment, Pastor? And I, I think I think you have um, concluded. Very okay. Well. 
All that's, right. that's okay. to say the fact that God has given us the law in the beginning of the creation, before the beginning of the creation in heaven, the Satan Lucifer has tried to destroy God's law and yes. he, he wanted to have a chaos. Uh, and this came also to the to our time, our our uh, or the earth, to Adam and Eve. And we see right now that uh, those people who are obeying God's law are protected um, by, by grace. And, and I also, they experience peace, even though they are going through tribulation and problems. So I will encourage those people who are watching us uh, to keep the law of God, not as a point of salvation, not to be, not to be saved, not something that it is uh, to make points, as my, my son says, if I'm doing good, can you give me points? Because you are operating based on points here. Uh, so I said, yes. So it's not by doing something you are achieving salvation. Salvation is a gift. But keeping the law, keeping the commandments of Christ and all the other laws, health mm -hmm. law and also uh, moral law, you will achieve a better quality of life. You will achieve a better relationship with your neighbors and also with the society and also with the state and, and the country you are living you'll be a blessing a light for everybody by obeying the law of god amen and i think too that just what as you were saying that pastor it made me realize that it's a progressive thing when i obey god um i i want to obey god when I disobey him, I'm more inclined to disobey him again. So there's mm -hmm. a principle involved there. And um, so we can leave it at that. And uh, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate your input. I hope everyone has gotten some uh, something out of this lesson and a blessing um, that they'll be able to take with them for the coming week. And uh, we're going to have Ashiel close us with prayer. Thank you, Ashiel. Yeah, thank you. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you so much for this wonderful time that you have been with us revising this lesson. We thank you that the only way we can be great, we can be remembered, is through obedience to your law. We thank you that you are a God who takes care of us and who wants us to know the truth so that the truth can set us free. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this lesson. We thank you also for those who have been listening to us. May the Holy Spirit keep teaching us. May the Holy Spirit keep strengthening us and be able to put in action the law that you have set us, as you have set in front of us so that we can uh, get the benefits from it. It's not that you want us to just follow you as blind people, but you want, uh, you want us to know you so that we can uh, choose you because you are the best God and mm -hmm. you are the best uh, father we need to trust for. Father, be with us, be with everyone. Uh, help us to get all the blessings that come with the Sabbath. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Have a happy and blessed Sabbath and we'll see you next time. Happy Sabbath. Thank you so much, Sister Mary Lou. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath.